Welcome YouTube. The video you're about to see is a reaction video. It is a video of opinion. Nothing personal is meant toward the individuals in the videos. My volition uh, for posting these reaction videos is to look at these videos and critique them through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Usually they are quantum grammar related videos and I'm looking for correct sentence structure knowledge here. And I'm also looking at the claims made in the videos through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Now you may notice that I'm doing certain things with my hands. I am not making any secret hand signs or gestures. When one is doing public speaking, there's only so many things you can do with your hands. You can fold them, maybe put them on your hips, dangling lifelessly at your sides, put them in your pockets, hold them like this, whatever it is. I'm not making any type of signaling gestures, unless I do this, which means shaka. Keep in mind the information, the things that I'm sharing in this video are for educational purposes only, entertainment purposes only, nothing personal towards the individuals in the videos themselves. Thanks and enjoy. Hello there, folks. In this video, I'm going to be doing an audit on someone's grammar. Now, a little background on myself. My name is Colin Jason. I have a Matthew Colin Glass. I've been teaching correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar since February of 2018 to a lot of different people, hundreds of people all over the earth. Up until this present day, I'm still teaching. I have a YouTube channel, which you may be watching right now. This, this video may be on my YouTube channel. I have like 900 videos, all having to do with this wonderful grammar technology known as Correct Sentence Structure Communication Parse Syntax Grammar, technology brought to the public in 1988 by the late Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller. It has always been my position of peace and neutrality that there is no correct grammar claim on this technology. There is no correct grammar claim on the 1x1.9 flag. I can prove this. I have proven it. If there is an individual out there making claims that they own the copyrights to the 1x1.9 flag and the grammar technology, well then we need to see that document to prove their claim because it's a continuous evidence. You have to prove what you're claiming. Now, to his credit, uh, David Wynn Miller's protege, or former protege, Colin Russell Haven J. Colin Gould, has made his copyrights public, his claim. And he did that back in 2018 uh, when he held the Reno seminars and he actually emailed them to me, the documents. I have the documents, I have the email, and I have the invite. And... I have since, in other videos, shown that the very copyright copy claim that Russell claims he has on the grammar is not correct grammatically. So logic would dictate that how can one claim to own or possess a grammar technology if they don't know how to use it? They didn't create it, okay, and they don't know how to use it. So how can you do that? How can you hold or claim to hold a copyright on something like that? That's a rhetorical question. So it's always been my position that if one has closure on correct sentence structure communication, parse, syntax, grammar, if one has closure on the flag mechanics, 
the pulsa mechanics, the banking mechanics, and most importantly, the grammar mechanics, then one is authorized to use this technology. Because as Russell and David have said in the past, and I agree with it, authority comes from knowledge. You have to know what you're doing to be able to hold a position. Okay? That's always been my position. And so far, there has been nothing to change my mind about that. I've been 100% successful myself in using this technology and stopping the trespass of the fiction system since 2017. Okay? Um, my students, my best students, some of my best students, they have had successes with it in and out of foreign vessels and dry dock and federal postal course and things like that. It's all been successful without Russell J. Gould's thumbprint or anyone else's thumbprint. It's just their thumbprint and they are the authority of what it is they're doing. They have taken authority over their own construct. They don't need someone's permission to do this. Which is, if you think back to those old Dave Windmiller seminars, it's exactly what he was saying to people. Go ahead and use it. Do it. You don't need his permission to use it. He never, ever said, oh, you need me to authorize that. No. He said, go ahead. Take my live life claim template. Make your live life claim. Here's how you do it. Go do it. Don't send them to me. I don't want them. They're yours. You go use it. Use the technology. Basically telling everyone to use it. And then when he passed away, all of a sudden, all these people started coming out of the woodwork. The first one being, of course, which we, he didn't come out of the woodwork. He already was in the wood, is uh, Russell. You know, he immediately came out did his Reno seminars and said what he said and tried to bottleneck it and make it private, make it classified or whatever. And I mean, that's fine if you want to believe in all that. That's cool. Go, you know, deal with those type of people. I personally will not contract with anyone that has anything to do with him uh, simply because I do not contract with people with warlike volition and who behave like that with that authoritarian fiction mindset. And he doesn't use correct grammar, so. <laughs> and I've proven that again and again and again. Okay, then there was another individual that I can't remember their name. They also claimed that David gave them uh, permission to use the flag or something like that. And then a few years later, the individual I'm gonna be talking about in this video colon Jason hyphen Paul colon griefs came forward. Now this guy, I mean, as I said, I started using the grammar in uh, 2017. I started studying in uh, the summer of 2017. This guy, Jason Paul Grievous, was, I guess, born in 1990. I almost, you know, feel a little weird about making this video about such a a young fellow out there doing this, but hey, I didn't twist his arm to say the things that he said. And I don't even look at him as anything other than uh, just another, I guess, wannabe. That, and I'm not name-calling. I'm saying that he wants to be what he says he is. He, he claims to be commander-in-chief, just like Russell does. He claims to have copyrights to the technology and the flag, just like Russell does. He claims to be all these things, just like Russell does. Um, so to me, there's really no difference between the two other than um, Russell's my age. Or actually, I think Russell's a little bit younger than me. And this guy, Jason Paul Grievous, is just a kid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the grammar. This has been my claim all along that... You know, if you're going to claim to hold a copyright for a grammar, you better know how to use it. Let's think about that for a moment, ladies and gentlemen. What type of individual wants someone else to call them commander-in-chief? Who wants to be that, in that position? 
What kind of mindset is that, that you want to control and command and have other people call you chief? What kind of mentality does that take? Right? What kind of mentality does that take to, to try and think that you, with your title of commander in chief, can now suddenly dictate or control what other people do or don't do? I mean, what kind of, I mean, condition of state psychology does it take for one to do that? Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. So what sort of sparked it off was, I guess, perhaps this post right here, where I said, this is proof of Commander Chief's 4951's correct sentence structure knowledge level. All I was saying there is this is proof of his knowledge level. I didn't say he didn't have closure on it. I just said it's proof of his knowledge level. And then I said for anyone interested, if they would like to gain closure on the grammar, they are welcome to apply for a workshop with me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. Please, I ask that ridiculous titles be dropped and correct names be used. And then... Grievous actually commented on this. He says, what a load of rubbish. You're a fraud. And your own website proves you don't know anything about Parse Syntax Grammar. Well, Grievous, what is Parse Syntax Grammar? I teach correct sentence structure, communication Parse Syntax Grammar. I don't know what you're talking about, Parse Syntax Grammar. You were also messaged by me years ago and you did a runner. What, what does that mean? From the time I came on to the public on the internet, I have made it clear that the correct venue to contact me regarding this grammar technology is jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. That's why it's called jasonmatthewg17, because I made the email address in 2017. And that's the correct venue. If you're talking about you messaged me on some social media platform, then I don't know what world of assumption and presumption that you exist in, uh, but that's personal, private uh, social media for me. And if you message me and you're not my friend, then I'm not going to see the message because I have all my message settings set to, you know, friends only. So that doesn't even count what you're saying there. You didn't go through correct venues. You didn't message me on a YouTube channel. I mean, you didn't leave a comment Yeah, and you didn't send me an email. So, I mean, that's quite the assumption presumption. You've got 45 days to stop and correct and put closure on your words or I will be formally disqualifying you. Stop and correct what? What am I wrong about, Grievous? Tell me. You have to be specific about these things. If I'm doing something wrong, as far as the grammar goes, let me know. Uh, so I don't no idea what you're talking about. It. Put closure on your words. You first, buddy. And as far as disqualifying me, you can join the club, all right? I've already been disqualified by Mark Lord, Case K, Kishon Christopher, which, by the way, you remind me of him. I've also been disqualified by Russell J. Gould. So, I mean, join the, join the club, bro. You know how much that means to me? Absolutely nothing. P.S. Give me a call for some free lessons. Looks like you need it. Well... I amend my statement back here where I say they're welcome to apply for a workshop with me. It looks as though Grievous couldn't come up with anything original, so he sort of regurgitated what I said and repeated it back to me. But I let me amend my statement. Instead of teaching you correct sentence structure, I think perhaps you may need some lessons in plain, simple English first with punctuation and using proper English rather than this hackneyed slang that you're using, which I don't even know what it means to 
you did a runner. What the hell does that mean? And then shortly after that, he fired this one off and said, really, you use the word and you join letters, you use all caps writing, then jump to case text in the compound name. All you're doing is regurgitating crap. What has he actually said there, ladies and gentlemen? I use the word. Which word? I use a lot of words, dude. A lot of words. And you join letters. Yes, you join letters together um, to create words. Like L-E-T-T-E-R-S, they are joined together to form the word letters. Right? That way you can separate words from other words. Again, I can give you, you know, I was an English major in school, so I can give you lessons on plain, simple English if you need them. Jump to case text in the compound name. That is correct because upper and lower casing credentials a live life claimant. Anyone with basic root and elementary closure on David Wayne Miller's technology would know this. Okay. So, I mean, that seems like another area where you might need to study a little bit on is uh, the casing of text and the use of capital letters and things like that. Like I said, prove your claims on the copyrights I hold, you fool. Ah, and the old ad hominem attack, because when someone knows they don't have a position, they will resort to tactics like this. They will name call. They will pick the lowest hanging fruit. And again, you know, he's a kid. So he's a young fellow. Let's put it that way. I, and I'm not, again, I'm not trying to ad hominem. I'm trying to say that there's a difference in age here, okay? Age and experience. Um, I didn't know that this individual was this young. I, I didn't know that before. I, I only found out when I started researching him. And so that kind of, you know, gave me a little bias, a little uh, empathy towards this individual because they are so young. So let's begin our audit of this individual's grammar. And let's start with this right here. This is something called an of the space port card, period. Right off the bat, regular viewers of this channel will know that this colon in space is not correct. The S must be tied up against the colon in order for it to be correct, because every correct sentence structure must start with a cause. For the. For, F-O-R, is the cause. O of is the concern. With is the possessive and by is the authority. Every sentence starts with for the. So it would have to say for the space spaceport card, not of the spaceport card. So that is incorrect. And again, uh, you have a colon space ployee. I don't know what a ployee is. I know what a ploy is. A ploy is like a plot or a plan, isn't it? So he's plotting. Uh, I can't tell. Okay, yeah, there are, there are spaces in between the colons here and the first letter of the facts. Oh, and look at this. He has a, a space after the L, a colon, and then a space, and then G. How are we supposed to know what that means? Are we just to assume what that means? autograph and no full stop after the autograph he uses particles of negation in his facts agency vowel in front of a consonant means no ing is a particle of negation oh it's a license so a license is a part of the legal system so grievous is actually saying he's participating with the legal system which is the fiction system legal Legalities, litigious, license. So he's actually telling us that he's part of that fiction system here, at least to my perception. So let's see, what do we got here? Colon space, again, all the space in the colons, and there's no 
left justification here. Some of it's centered, some of it's not. So that creates breaks in the continuance of the evidence if you don't give closure to what you're doing. We have a cartoon up here. We don't know what that is of the, and then we have a dangling participle colon up here, which is a name that I came up with for a colon that has no purpose. It's not positioning anything because colon represents a position lodial phrase. And those are used to position facts. But there are no facts following this colon. It's just another colon on the next line here, another of the. So again, this grievous really has no clue about this grammar. I don't even know if I'd put his knowledge level at 50%, and I have not seen any of his syntax lately, so I have no idea what that would be, but this is horrible. For this claim of this vessel controller, particle negation, contra, C-O-N-T-R-O means no. So it's using particles of negation in the fact, oh, what is this? For this claim of this vessel controller name, and then you put the name and then a colon, and then is? So there are two position lodial fact phrases in front of the verb, not three. And I see a colon there, and it's actually a dangling colon because there's a space between this line and a space between the next line. Vowel in front of a consonant, O in front of the P in operational means no. Motion is no contract, the MO is no contract, it means to push away. Now, I'm not going to hit every particle of negation. I'm going to skip over some of them for brevity's sake. The travel port location of the claimant. I know the claimant's vessel featured claim with this vessel means transport name of this means claim with the open. Vow in front of a consonant means no. Conveyance travel right by this authorization travel certificate. You're creating your own construct. You can do whatever you want. You just have to get other people to buy into it. But correct postal mechanics, as far as correct sentence structure communication, parsley syntax grammar goes, means the postal, the fee for freight must go in the upper starboard side corner of the vessel. The 1 by 1.9 flag goes in the upper port side uh, position on the vessel. Now look at this, vessel features. What do you see there, ladies and gentlemen? Anyone who's ever taken a class with Mark lowercase k knows this. Anyone who's watched David Wynn Miller videos knows this. What is this? This is a box. Not to mention the shit grammar that's in the box, but it's a box. And what is this UPU cartoon? UPU. There's no periods or anything, so we have to say that it's a word it means upa, upa, upa. Vow in front of a consonant, no contract. Here's another one that uh, Grievous authored, and this one says, of the, you can plainly see there's a space there, of the Quo oranto court complaint command space dangling participle colon followed by what another colon space correct sentence certain communicate participle document contract okay particle negation c o n t r a contra postal vessel court flag and of the One dollar stamp fee of the document, blah, 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 jurisdiction with the court building, particle negation, ING of the writ, with the fault contract, another particle negation, contra, rule 55, and with the court rental complaint, continues claim by the correct sentence structure document, kind again, particle negation. Now, this is centered. Now, if someone would go and put in the document that the reason for the centering of the text it would give closure as to why there's so much excessive spacing, but we don't know that. I mean, we can use the balance of the honor and the grace, 
but I'm not going to use that for Grievous simply because of the way he's acted um, towards me. So I'm not giving him any breaks. And this is all breaks in the continuance of the evidence. Speaking of breaks, colon space day 17 space colon space. This is horrible. Horrible, horrible. Another dangling participle colon. Oh, and look. Tilde 1. This has not been positioned. So this single error right here throws this whole thing, no matter what else is going on, into adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble. Because this, number one, has not been positioned as a fact. Now you may say, oh, well, you don't have to position a number because a number is a fact. How do I know that? Are we to assume that a number is a fact? If facts must be positioned with position lodial fact phrases and a number is a fact, then you have to use a position lodial phrase to position that fact. Whether it's a number one or a O-N-E or a O-E-N. It's common sense, folks. It's just the same mistakes over and over and over again. I will say that the positional sequencing, the concatenation overall in general, is way better than Russell J. Gould's. I can say that. But there's so many other mistakes. Like, for example, by the docketing fee, hyphen, and then ampersand, and then colon, which is incorrect. Because by the, the colon again, just like for the, because for is congruent with by, positional-wise, the colon would be tied up against the D if you were using a colon instead of by the. It would be tied up against the D, and then in which case, if you're using the ampersand, then it would have to be ampersand space, and then the colon would be tied up against the F in filing, if this was printed correctly, left justified. But it's not. So, folks, what I'm doing, unlike Grievous, where Grievous said I have to stop and correct, and he didn't even say what I have to stop and correct, or what he thinks I should stop and correct, I'm telling you, I'm giving you closure. I'm showing you the mistakes, the problems, and I'm giving you the solutions. I'm giving you a grammar lesson as I go. Have you ever seen Grievous do that? I don't think so. And the reason why is perhaps he doesn't know how. So, all right, let's move on to something else. Oh, what is this? UK, and then we get the Crown Corporation logo here. And again, folks, it's all in a box. To certify that the work, colon, space, space, oh wow, double spacing, breaking the continuance of the evidence, negotiable, any means no, particle of negation. 2022 should have a tilde in front of it after the hyphen. What is, oh my goodness. This is all adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, BS in a box. It's BS, it's bullshit in a box. Here's your postmaster general of our planet. Colon space, it's of the Jason hyphen Paul with the grievous that's him that's your your uh oh my god what is that oh it's backwards because he's taking a, a mirror selfie he's gonna say the flag <laughs> again you know i mean if you want to create your own construct and put stamps wherever you want to put them that's cool but you got to get other people to do that with you uh, correct postal mechanics, the 1 by 1.9 flag again would be in the upper port side of the document and the fee for freight would be in the upper starboard side. That is, those are correct postal mechanics. Oh, and here we got one more thing to look at. This is a clerk court form, which 
Grievous sells on his website for 80 pounds. And this is the grammar you get for 80 pounds. <clears throat> Colon space. C-S-S-C-P-S-C-G-P-D-C-F-P-P-V. What the hell? And then dangling participle colon. Document contract federal postal vessel court venue performance. What? What is that even? What is that? There's no closure to that abbreviation. If you're going to give closure to an abbreviation, it has to come immediately after it. On the same line or right after it. In the same font, in the same typeset. But again, you see this is all centered. You see all these breaks in the continuance of the evidence. Uh, the date is incorrect as far as it's not positioned as a fact and it has, oh my goodness, it's written in fiction. Again, particles negation and all the facts there. Oh, check this out. For the document contract, Federal Postal Station Court Venue claim of the document contract corporation case number R, A-R-E. Even a beginner student knows that that verb is wrong. The verb has to be singular because a document contract federal postal station court venue claim is singular. It's one thing. So it would use a singular verb is. Are with these damage claims by the Vasilis fraudulent parse syntax grammar claims? So Grievous is making a claim for someone else. He's making a claim for a Vasily. That is a trespass. That is an assumption presumption. As David Wynn Miller taught, one may only make a claim for oneself and one may only make a damage claim for myself. Like say, for example, if the Vasilis damage someone, you don't make a claim for the Vasily, you make a claim for yourself. That's obviously something Grievous hasn't learned yet, but maybe he will learn it if he's watching this video. For this claim is name of this damage claim, and then you have a colon. Oh my goodness. That is incorrect. Because if you have two position loadio fact phrases and then you want to add another position loadio fact phrase, you have to have a verb in there and you have to have at least two position loadio fact phrases after that in order to maintain the mathematical interface. Abbreviation terms. Vowel in front of a consonant means no. As I said, particles negation in the facts. Cleric certification of the final fault document contract. What the fuck? Oh my goodness, another incorrect verb right here. For this certification claim is singular, so then the verb would have to be is. So you can get all of this quantum gobbledygook for 80 pounds. Enjoy. So here's a few images of, of this individual. Here, here, here. That's obviously not him. And then this one right here, Depop. MCR Fashion. Hello, I'm a federal postal judge, postmaster general, and retail business owner. Oh, wow. So not only is he a federal postal judge, postmaster general, commander in chief, but he's also a fashionista. Cool. All right, folks. I think I've done enough here. I have proven that Grievous does not have closure on the grammar. As far as writing a correct sentence structure goes, I'd say he's about 60% there. He's missing a lot on colon mechanics and spacing and particles negation in his facts and things like that. Matter of fact, I wonder if he even has his own dictionary. 
But in any case, I have not seen any examples of syntaxing, which is very curious to me. Now, unlike Grievous, I'm not here to name call an ad hominem. I'm not telling him to stop and correct. I'm not threatening him with disqualifying himself. Uh, anything as far as grammar goes that he's doing, he's doing himself. He's showing himself by his performances that he's using incorrect grammar. And I'm not even talking about casing of the letters because the casing of the letters has nothing to do really with the grammar. If you want to write correct sentence structure in all lowercase, you can. You just have to be consistent with it and you have to give closure to the, the fact of what you're doing. If you want to write it using the positionals and lodials in all lowercase and in all caps on the facts, that's up to you. Matter of fact, that's uh, Colin David Ivan Colin Miller suggested that was an effective way of communicating using that approach. But it's not, I mean, it's not a grammar rule. It has nothing to do with grammar. It's casing of the letters. It's your way, the way you write them. Or you can write them in all caps. And you can tell the difference between an all capped entity and an upper and lowercase entity. That's how you tell what a live life claimant is from a dead entity or whatever else, a nom de guerre. I mean, these are just common sense, logical uh, scenarios for me. So I'm not here to call names. I'm not here to disqualify anyone. Matter of fact, when I first came across this grievous kid years ago, uh, I think it was on a internet um, grammar group. He, uh, I could see that he was trying to get students. He was trying to drum up business for his blue thumb club thing. And I wasn't, see, I'm not the type of person to go into someone else's uh, thing and interfere with it. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Like, I'm not going to go over to his channel and, and start criticizing him or name calling him or anything like that. It's just not what I'm, I'm about. I mean, I'll let the young folks do that. Like, like he did to me. Like he came, although I didn't publish the comments, um, he came to me aboard my vessel as a guest and was rude right off the bat. So I kicked him out because obviously he doesn't know etiquette or protocol, which again, given his age, I might be able to give him a pass for that. Maybe he wasn't raised that way um, to be polite and have manners or to speak with proper English when using plain and simple English, certainly can't speak using correct sentence structure. That I do know. So, I mean, I guess it comes down to a position of cultivating humility. Would someone like this guy that you just saw, and I showed you all the grammatical evidence of his lack of correct sentence structure knowledge and some of the other things that I showed you like his comments, the way he carries himself, the way he speaks to other people and the other things, his other business and businesses in life does someone like that seem like that that they would possess humility? Does it seem like it? See my own personal perception? I would say probably not. Probably not. Like you get someone like Russell that claims to be humble, but yet won't stop and correct his grammar. And I'm not saying Russell should stop and correct his grammar. What I'm saying is he hasn't admitted that his grammar is not correct because that would take humility. So my position is both Russell J. Gould and this grievous kid, they can't hold a copyright copy claim on a correct grammar technology when they themselves do not use correct grammar. And not only did I show you the evidence that grievous doesn't use correct grammar, but I also showed you how to correct it. I gave you closure on having a problem and then presenting a solution. It's not that hard. Folks, you know. When I'm wrong, when I make a mistake, 
I come out in public and I correct it. And I show the mistake and I show how to correct it and I give credit to whomever pointed it out to me. It's pretty easy because I personally try to cultivate humility. Whether I'm successful with it or not, that's up to you to decide. But this has been a grammar audit. And this grammar audit was done on Colin Jason. Uh, what the heck's his name again? Colin Jason hyphen Paul colon space Grievous, which is the correct way to write the name using correct set mechanics. And the conclusion is that there is no evidence that he has closure on correct sentence structure. Therefore, there can be no correct grammar, copyright copy claim on the grammar. And folks, who would want to own that anyways? Unless it's some sort of scam to make money, to get people to buy into the fact that you own this and they need it to be successful in their life. So you better join their club, create a membership, start paying a fee. That way you can get all the documents and blah, blah, blah. I mean, I'm not here to stop somebody from, you know, feeding their family or whatever. All right, but what I am here to do is to show the pitfalls and landmines and to teach correct sentence structure, communication, policy, syntax, grammar. Uh, and I think that's what I'm doing. I try to stay away from name calling and I definitely don't make it personal. However, I do take into account the way someone treats me or behaves when they come to me. And this individual, this grievous, has proven to be a very rude and lacking in etiquette and even proper English. So, it is what it is. Um, grievous, you wanted the attention, you got it. Maybe you'll get a few more subscribers for your channel. Maybe, you know, you can get that, get more attention and drum up more business for you. I don't know. But one thing I do know is that my offer stands. If you want to learn how to use correct, proper, plain, simple English, you can email me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com, and we can work on that first. And then once you get a grasp on that, then we can move on to correct sentence structure. Because you can't really put the, the, the cart before the horse, right? All right. Peace. If you would like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, I offer several choices. The first one, and the easiest one, is to study the almost 900 free public videos on this YouTube channel that you're watching right now. The second option, if you want to see new content, is to click the Join button on my main YouTube page or under any video that you're watching. Click the Join button and you will see two tiers of membership. If you choose the second tier, the Loyalist Contributor tier, and you join that for a monthly support donation, you'll get new content, fresh content, exclusive content not available to the public every month. But keep in mind, there's already almost 900 videos here free to the public to study. And the third option is to contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen, and this is for the serious students only, and apply for a correct grammar workshop. But please include your correct name when contacting me, and I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation, and you and I will have a conversation. You can ask me whatever you want. I'll answer your questions. I'll do the same with you. I'll ask you questions, and we'll see if indeed you are really serious or not. Thank you.